I'm Guy Evans and welcome to my home museum. Today's object is a black volcanic glass that forms when molten lava hits cool water. It's obsidian. Now you can find obsidian widely across the world in places where there's been, um, geologically speaking, relatively recent volcanic activity. The rock is occasionally coloured, where uh, a mineral gets swirled into the churning lava, but usually it's black and it's cooled so fast during its formation that crystals don't have a chance to form. And that leaves an amorphous solid, a bit like glass. And because it lacks, um, the structure lacks crystal planes of weakness, obsidian cleaves, like glass, into smoothly curving pieces or conchoidal fractures with very sharp edges. And this makes it an ideal cutting tool. And hundreds of thousands of years ago, people were collecting sharp pieces of obsidian and carrying them far from their origin to use uh, for jobs which other animals relied on their claws or teeth to perform. So, um, cutting jobs. Then they started to create their own pieces by deliberately breaking the rock in such a way as to maximise its usefulness. Now people learned ways to skillfully create various different cutting shapes and points and edges, including serrating. Um, and, and they used this to manufacture knives and arrowheads, spear points, scrapers, all sorts of other weapons and tools. And the rock was um, so valuable, it was one of the earliest mined commodities. Some ancient sites are littered with tons of obsidian flates. In fact, there's so much waste debris that uh, we think large numbers of stone workers must have laboured in this, in this industry for many decades, producing a variety of obsidian objects. And obsidian objects were so valued that ancient people mined and transported and, and traded them for up to a thousand miles, archaeologists have discovered. And they know this because they've, um, they've tracked back uh, the signatures of uh, some of the rock down back to the obsidian outcrops where they were originally mined. But um, they're not just stuck in the Stone Age because obsidian blades are still important today because the cutting edge of obsidian can be sharper and finer than the best surgical steel. So thin blades of obsidian are used in uh, surgical scalpels for some of the most precise surgery. So I think on that next time <laughs> you have to uh, have surgery that maybe it's a stone age surgery that you're receiving.